There are several love one another texts in the New Testament. Uh, we want to consider another one of those this week as we think about what it means for Jesus to say that we are called to love one another. Uh, this is a text that actually we're pretty familiar with. We stand every Sunday morning and we, we, by way of confession, rehearse some verses from the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Matthew and then uh, these verses from 1 John chapter 4. The reading that we rehearse starts in verse 19. This is what it says. We love God because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates a brother or sister, he is a liar because the person who doesn't love a brother or sister who can be seen can't love God who can't be seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. And so this text is really important for us as we move forward as a congregation, as we talk about who we are and what we're about because we're much more familiar, we're much more comfortable with the two greatest commands. Uh, we recite those every Sunday as well from Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40 that we should, you know, summarizing love God with everything we have and love our neighbor as ourself. The problem that we run into sometimes though is that we tend to treat those two commands as two different things that sometimes we, we set at odds against one another. And so we'll say, okay, this is a time, whatever that time may be, where I love God. And that love for God takes precedent over loving my neighbor. I can love my neighbor in this scenario over here, but say this time is for me to love God. But what John tells us is that the primary way that we demonstrate our love for God, the way we fulfill the greatest command is actually to love our neighbor. That by loving the person in front of us, whoever that person is, whether it's someone that's important to us that we spend a lot of time with, that we've invested deeply and they, they've invested deeply in us, or whether it's somebody that we've just met, somebody that we may never meet again, he says the way that you demonstrate your love for God is to love that person that is in front of you. And so one of the big challenges of what we're trying to do at Ethan Harrison is we're trying to get into this mindset that loving the person who sits next to you in the pew or who's beside you in the road, who is at the desk in front of you at school or, or in the office or in line with you at HEB, saying we love God means treating that person as someone who bears the image of God. And so how would it look for us to walk into those scenarios and say, okay, I want to bless this person who's in line with me. I want to bless the person at the cash register. I, I come to worship and the way I say I love you to God is not primarily through my prayers or through my songs or my praise, but by blessing the other people who have gathered to worship God. What would that look like? So spend some time in your group discussing what it looks like to love God by loving the people that he creates. What does it mean to live out this truth that we read in 1 John 4, starting in verse 19, going down through the end of the chapter? Have a great discussion.